In one of my previous videos, I discussed some of what I consider to be a couple of the most based search engines you can use in today's world. But what is the point in using a base search engine if your web browser is just some generic normie garbage? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a couple of options in terms of what kind of based web browsers I think are the best. So, let's get straight into it. Now, I am going to be listing these in no particular order, however I will explain my reasoning for naming each of these a based web browser. So, the first one is going to be Firefox. Now, before you start attacking me, let me explain. Yes, the Firefox browser has had its fair share of controversies in the not so distant past, and yes, it also has some pretty questionable default settings enabled. However, because of its open source nature, it does allow for forks to be made from its code base, as well as enabling its users to customize it any way they see fit, like the about config menu for example. The Firefox browser also just works. You can spend a little bit of time changing a few settings here and there, install a few browser extensions to make life that little bit more bearable, and there you have it a fully functioning, up-to-date browser that can be used for anything on the net, from downloading and reading PDF documents to being able to play DRM-controlled content. And I think because of its versatility and potential for the user to do as they please with little pushback, it's a pretty damn good browser overall. Not to mention, it is the most popular browser out of the ones we're going to be discussing today. So with that said, let's move on to the next browser. This next one is going to be ungoogled Chromium. Ungoogled Chromium is, in essence, the open source Google backed Chromium project without the spook Google inserts into it. This means that the ungoogled Chromium has the same look and feel as most other Chromium based browsers, Google Chrome for example, without glowing like a Christmas tree. However, there are some drawbacks. For example, this web browser has fewer features than its Chromium counterpart due to the developers of the ungoogled Chromium project removing all Google features and blobs. It also doesn't have immediate access to the default Google web store, but has its own version of it, which isn't an issue for the types of people who will be compiling from source while daily driving Gentoo, but for the people who will be downloading a binary exe for their Windows 11 install, will be in for quite a shock. But then again, the people who are using Windows 11 have probably never heard of GitHub and are probably knee deep in the Bing ecosystem anyway. So that's on Google Chromium. It's basically Google Chromium without the Google bit. So let's run over to the next one. The next one is going to be an interesting one, but one I think is worthy of note. The GNU IceCat project. IceCat is a privacy centric web browser based off of the Firefox browser. It came into being in 2005 as Iceweasel, due to some disagreements and licensing issues with Mozilla and their trademark of the word Firefox, and after a name change in 2007, has been known as GNU IceCat since. Like I've said, its, the ma its main aim is to provide a privacy-centric and free, in both the philosophical and economical sense of the word, web browser. It comes pre-installed with browser add-ons such as HTTPS Everywhere, which enables HTTPS on all viable sites and warns you when it can't, and some anti-fingerprinting measures and tracker blockers. Since it is an entirely open source web browser, it can be compiled on your system, but there are also binary packages available for those who don't want to wait a day for it to compile. There are unofficial builds for Windows 10, but if you're still using Windows 10 and wanting to stay secure online, you're probably looking in the wrong place. The next one I'm going to talk about is also a fork of the Firefox browser, but one I just couldn't ignore. The web browser Pale Moon. Pale Moon has a focus on customizability and privacy. The browser is under the Mozilla Public License 2.0, which is basically a copyleft license by Mozilla for Firefox forks, with a rough mark on what they can and cannot do with the trademark Firefox. The source code for the up-to-date development of Pale Moon isn't exactly publicly available in a repository, and since September of this year, they have apparently moved to a quote, cathedral-style release, where they release tarballs and binary packages for each of the new versions. I'm not sure what they are trying to pull, but it's weird. What's so hard about putting your source code out in the public? 
Pale Moon was based off Firefox ESR version 24, but has since moved to its own version, scheme and development. Since it is based on quite an old version of Firefox, the look and feel of the browser is quite old and out of date, though it does still see active de development and support from its community, with multiple community-driven ports for other operating systems, like the macOS and BSD. Now, the final based web browser before we get into the honourable mentions would have to be Waterfox. Yet, another self-explanatory Firefox-based web browser, Woodfox states its focus is on the balance between usability and privacy. Interestingly enough, the Waterfox web browser was originally built for Windows during 2011, but has since had ported to other operating systems such as Linux and the macOS. As I previously stated, Woodfox is based on Firefox, however it has removed all of the telemetry elements of Firefox as well as Pocket, which is a feature I am sure absolutely everyone would miss. Waterfox does however use Bing as its default search engine, which is pretty weird if you ask me, why not just use DuckDuckGo or SirX, but you win some and you lose some, and it's easy enough to change it. Now for the honourable mention, which is, of course, the Brave browser. And in my humble opinion, the Brave browser is not based at all. The thing that pushed me away from using Brave was how much it was shilled online by seemingly everyone. And don't even get me started on BAT. I did briefly and honestly quite poorly cover this in one of my earlier videos I made on the channel. But in essence, if you have a good and honest product, why pay out millions to people who really have no idea what they are doing to shill it? I'll be making another video further explaining everything Brave, like the browser, the crypto, and the search engine, but I'll leave it as it is for now. I'm not the biggest fan of Brave, so don't expect a ultimately unbiased review. To be honest, I hated it the first time I laid my eyes on it. So. That's about all of the web browsers I have used, at least a couple of times in the past, that I consider to at least be somewhat based. If you found this list useful, or you disagree with what I said, then comment it down below, and like the video if you did, and maybe even subscribe. I do a bunch of Linux and tech stuff on the channel, so if you're into that sort of stuff, you will indeed enjoy it here. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you like, comment and subscribe, and click that notification bell. Have a good day everyone. Bye bye.